Hello, I'm Mike Thompson. I uh, am an application engineer with CATI, as Chris mentioned earlier. Uh, I My background with CAD and CAM uh, is largely in prototyping and one-off environments. I spent a few years in industrial design for mass market products and then moved over to freelance design and fabrication before starting with CATI last year. This webcast is on soft jaw design for simple and complex work holding. Uh, we are going to spend the time primarily on the complex work holding, uh, but it's all based off of the lessons that we learn from uh, more simple work holding techniques. To follow along with that, um, I have built uh, a case study around this device here. Uh, this is a turbo encabulator, uh, as I am sure some of you are quite uh, familiar with. And uh, this is just a, a tricky piece to, to make in real life. To kind of assist with this whole process, starting with this part, this finished piece that we want to get, uh, I also have a configuration for how it's going to look because initially it's going to come off of a lathe and be finished on the mill. So we have to get our work holding set up on uh, for what is going to come off of the lathe. So that is this setup here. This is the uh, 3D model of a Kurt vise that uh, we would use in the shop. As you can see, we have a one, two, three block down here uh, on which the work will rest because it's kind of a shallow piece and our end mills might have some trouble getting to it. Some other things to note is that this assembly is fully mechanically related. So uh, that means when you know I, I move a face, it moves everything else along because I want to make sure that my setup here uh, represents what we're going to be working with in real life. So one, one of the big things for that is making sure that this uh, middle spherical face uh, is sitting appropriately in these uh, in these countersunk holes on the one two three block. Make sure you run your interference detection and everything like that, so that this setup is what you're going to end up with uh, in real life. One of the other reasons why I have everything set up this way is because uh, I have a SolidWorks Cam Pro license. So that means that I can get everything set up in an assembly and actually generate my G code from here. Uh, and on a tricky part, like the turbo encabulator, uh, there are not a lot of great places to zero things off, uh, especially for Z. So what that lets me do is I can use a, uh, a fixed face on the top of the vise or use the top of the one, two, three block uh, as my Z height for uh, for getting things all set up. And uh, the last part that does not reflect reality is that if we take a look over on this squatter end near this spherical face, we can see that uh, there is going to be a lot of machining force applied here. Uh, which could cause uh, our work to seesaw a little bit back and forth. So what I have done is just made sure that I have left enough space in my assembly to uh, put a screw jack down on uh, my vise face in case it turns out that, you know, on the first run or two that part does slip, we have enough space to put that in there for some additional support. But uh, aside from that, everything is kind of uh, set up and ready to go. So what I'm going to do is just, as you can see, we have a handful of uh, configurations for our assembly. I'm just going to swap over to uh, the soft job design assembly just to uh, kind of give us a, uh, a better idea of what we're going to start with. The stock is going to look like this coming off the lathe and onto the mill, so we might as well design for that exact scenario. 
And while spherical faces are quite slippery and uh, challenging to hold, especially if you're a skilled machinist and get good surface finishes, like I'm sure all of us are, no chatter marks or anything, never. Uh, we can see that going to a top view actually does give us a little bit more space to work. Um, I have everything made it in here so that there is distance between my one, two, three block and my vice faces. It would uh, be a bit of a bummer to go through all of this work to uh, design our faces and only find out that we're clamping a one, two, three block instead of the actual work. But we would, you know, with cylindrical parts on a mill, that's kind of a solved issue. You, we can use V blocks against the moving face and push the uh, uh, cylindrical part against the fixed face. That's not going to work here because we just don't really have enough meat to support this work properly on either of these cylindrical faces. So we have to work with the spherical faces. And the, we can use the lessons that we would learn from V blocks to support this. V blocks work because um, against a cylindrical piece of work, there are two tangent faces to that cylindrical work and a third tangent face against the fixed uh, vise face. And for a part to be fully geometrically constrained, uh, it needs to have at least three points of contact in each plane uh, that forces can work against it. So the V block works because you have the two tangent faces from the V and the one tangent face from the fixed face on your vise. Um, this is a little bit harder to work around and, uh, we don't, we can't get like an arbitrary slice, I guess, that you can in the V block, you know, whether you do a, uh, whether you're looking at a plane that's, you know, parallel from the bottom of your, of your, uh, vise and looking up, or it's a little angled, you're going to have three points of contact on all of those axes. With the spherical faces, a little bit less so. And because this moving face on the vise does just that, it moves, we can kind of work around that a little bit better. So here is the geometry that we've come out with for this, for a purely, you know, kind of top to bottom designed setup. And what we've done. Let me go into my edit component. Both of these vise faces are set up the exact same way. So we're able to look at how one was designed while the other one uh, stays fully modeled in front of us. We can see that these, uh, that these cylinders are also purely geometrically constrained. Um, there's no dimensions anywhere in all of this because the dimensions for these circles, quite frankly, don't matter. If everything they need to be geometrically constrained and those same constraints are going to hold the work. So, pardon, the uh, center point of our arcs are coincident to this edge of the vise phase, which is uh, uh, just a useful kind of landmark to have because if we're going to be making our own vice faces, we might as well model off of the existing vice faces as a template uh, because it's going to be reasonable and, fun and functional geometry. The other constraints that are really doing the work are these tangent constraints. And uh, these are just against this top down profile of the spherical faces on the turbo encabulator. So, each of these tangent relations, like the one here and the one here and here and here, these are doing the work. These are the points of contact that are delivering the clamping force to this body. And because they are cylindrical faces that are tangent to the sphere, there's only going to be one place that they're going to contact. So what's nice about that is that in this setup, as we tighten up our vise, 
it'll kind of wiggle the part into place. And that's really great for repeatability and just, you know, not having to spend a ton of time with edge finders uh, trying, I mean, you should still dial everything in and make sure it came out correctly because shops are wacky, but it, it's going to keep things from seesawing out of place too, too much, require quite a lot of force to overcome what you're putting through your vise onto that. And I'm going to exit this edit component. We can see everything fully done here and we can just right click our turbo encabulator, swap over to the finished product, and we can see that everything's looking hunky dory. We can double check that uh, there is adequate clearance. And once again, with Cam Pro doing our setups uh, inside of an assembly and generating our G code from an assembly, we can set these faces to be avoided. So this kind of moves on to the next section because a lot of resources that are out there for designing soft jaws uh, use Boolean operations. So, um, you know, you, you move two solid bodies such that they're interfering and uh, then you can just say, okay, CAD software, I want you to subtract, swap over. I want you to subtract the volume of this component from, say, this component, and it'll do that. You can do that in SOLIDWORKS parts very easily. Uh, it's just in the direct editing tab in your command manager. But that methodology is not always suitable for uh, complex geometry. And what I mean by that is this. If we look at the turbo encabulator uh, as a model coming off of the lathe, we can see that there are hard edges here. And uh, from, from the model, that's fine. And in your drawing, you know, coming off the lathe, there is going to be some radius there, uh, but this would take two tools, you know, uh, one symmetrical cutting tool and one grooving uh, tool to actually separate the work from the stock. So you can call out in your drawings, you know, the, the radius between these two faces can be no greater than X. Well, that doesn't come through in the assembly when we do these types of Boolean operations. Um, and because you know, those are internal corners on the turbo encabulator, but it becomes external corners on the soft jaws. These are corners that we can make. We can't make the ones, the, the hard corners on the turbo encabulator, but we can make it on these. And what that means now is that we have some very sharp corner delivering a clamping load to a curved face. And that's not what we want from this setup. We want these spherical faces to clamp onto the spherical faces of the turbo encabulator. We want to have all of that force applied on the faces, not from some edge to a radius. So how do we do that? Well, we can still come out of this process with functional soft jaws. Uh, we can take these edges and one by one apply radii to them uh, and, and that'll work out fine. We just need to be careful that that these are <laughs> that we end up doing, you know, subtractive radii, right? That, that we're taking material away instead of accidentally adding material in like we have on the turbo encabulator. Um, and that's that's hard to model. And, you know, if we wanted to have the radii, you know, if we put some fillets on the turbo encabulator here and here, here and here, right? You know, we can model those in and things like that, but they're not critical to the design of the piece. So it depends on how much work you want to put where. And what's more is that I think this is a, a 
I would say a responsible <laughs> way to model out our soft jaws and to generate G code in this SolidWorks assembly setup. And uh, when we're doing soft jaws, they need, or when we're working in that kind of environment in SolidWorks in the assembly space, we don't really have a great tool to do those Boolean subtractions. Uh, it, it's easier to do it at the part level. Um, so when you're in the assembly anyway, you might as well go ahead and design it. And that is also what I ended up doing to get the geometry on these. If we hide the work one more time and I choose to edit this component, we can see that this is not actually a Boolean operation. This is a revolved cut that I did. And all I did was create a plane parallel to the face and uh, coincident to the center axis of the turbo encabulator. And I just projected the geometry there from the sketch that was used to create the turbo encabulator. So that geometry is just a converted entity from this original sketch on the workpiece. So that's nice. One, if I make a change, it all cascades through. You know, the full associativity is one of the better <laughs> reasons to use SolidWorks in the first place over something else. But also uh, that we're designing anyway. We're not doing a single operation to get this set up. So if we're going to design, you might as well design all the way and do these radii and uh, work with everything else because it's just not quite uh, the tool that, that you want to use. That's just this quick, quick little piece on, on soft jaw design.